Hello, everybody. Rob Grosso here again. And we have reached the end of our talk about goals. And now today we're going to talk about a simple thing, making new goals. Because, congratulations, you have achieved your goals. You did everything you needed to do. You were motivated. You were measuring out your goals. You used the SMART method. You overcame failure. But the question now is, what's next? So the talk that we're going to be doing today is going to be a consideration of what do we do after we accomplish our goals. And there's a lot of different things we can go into on here. For example, we need to know when to stop and when to go. When do you set new goals with the same process, for example? So congratulations, you lost 20 pounds going to the gym. Do you want to lose another 20 pounds? Do you keep following the same method that you used when you were at the gym to lose those 20 pounds? Or do you do something new? You're able to get an 85 on your marking period. Do you do the same studying techniques to continue to get that 85 to maintain that score? Or do you try and push it further? When do you move on to new goals, for example, as well? Like, do we, instead of uh, trying to lose 20 pounds in the gym, um, do we want to maybe gain 10 pounds of muscle or something like that in the gym? That would be a new goal that would require maybe different techniques. Uh, achieving that 85 for our marking period is great, but now we want to bring up other classes that we might be failing. You know, we got the 85 for the entire marking period, but what's our weakest class and can we put that up even higher? What is the motivation in changing up what our goals is? That's something that we would always have to really ask ourselves. You know, you have to give considerations um, to determine what goals you are about to set. And a lot of those uh, determinations are actually just redoing the entire process we've talked about. So are we aiming higher for the same goal or are we starting something new? Are you going to focus on a new goal of the same type that you did before? Is it going to be an academic goal, an emotional goal, a financial goal, a professional goal? Um, is it also going to be a goal uh, that is long term, medium term, short term? These are all the different things that we need to consider. Once you accomplish a goal, congratulations. But now it's time to accomplish another, and then another, and another. You don't just stop at one. You can expand on your goals even further. And consider the following. What, why, and how? What is, what's your vision for this goal? What are you really trying to do or accomplish for this goal? Why? Why do you want to do this goal? Like, seriously. Do you think about what your motivation is and why this matters to you and not to anyone else? And how are you going to uh, do the goal? How are you going to get to the what that you defined earlier? You know, break down what you're planning to do until you really have a grasp on how it can be achieved. You know, sometimes what happens, especially with how, is that they tend to become smaller goals in of themselves as well. What often becomes a long-term goal requires a lot of short-term goals or tasks that lead up to that. So one example, let's say you want to buy a car. Why do you want to buy the car? Well, it'll be useful for you for work, for school, um, going from place to place, all that. How are you going to do that? Well, that's where the short-term goals would come in. For example, maybe you're putting money down from a part-time job and saving up each month. Maybe you need to save up, let's say, $5,000, $10,000. And you're getting every two weeks, you're putting in like a $100 or $200 to that goal. So it might take you maybe 10 months to a year to save up for that car where you could help purchase it. Maybe you need to convince a friend or a family member to uh, help you purchase the car. Maybe they have to co-sign with you if it's your first car, especially with your family. Maybe you will be forced to get a used car for cheaper than getting a brand new car. The goal though is always to get a car. Now, if you have a specific car in mind, that's a different story, but that's also important to keep in mind at the end of the day, you're expanding your goals by accomplishing smaller tasks and short-term goals, saving up money every month, 
to accomplish a longer term goal, purchasing a car. You can apply this to practically any goal that you want to expand on. Smaller goals, pancaking into larger goals. But the key point in all this is to always continue your path. Always strive to accomplish goals. Don't just stop. You know, achieving goals is always a good thing. You should always try to set more goals for yourself. You should always look to self-improve. And you should also stay positive with it. That's one of the big key features that we talked about previously. You know, a good mindset helps in setting up new goals. If we can set up new goals very well, that mindset goes a long way to helping us continue to accomplish our goals. Positivity is a very strong motivator and measuring stick in that way. And remember, failure is normal. If we don't accomplish our goals first time around, that still does not define us. The key is not to stop trying. And so summing it all up, be smart. Think about the types of goals you want to accomplish. Stay positive and don't quit. I just want to thank you all um, for listening to these series of videos. And I can't wait um, to talk to you all again. Thank you and have a good one.